Hey, Kelly. Hi, Christian. Hi, everybody who's joining. Leah, I'm going to keep my WhatsApp open in case you need to message me if there's an issue, but um, hopefully you can hear and see me okay. While we're waiting, I did throw a poll in to um, just gauge the experience level of the attendees today. So if you get a second, if you can let us know what your experience is uh, between, yay, I'm a veteran. I don't even know why I'm in this talk. I probably know more than you all the way through to, I've never tried, but I'm interested in finding out more. Looks like we've got one complete newbie. going to wait until uh, just a few more minutes for people to arrive. Hopefully there'll be some more users trickling in. Just make sure you fill out the poll if you're interested. I really like to know who is in the room. Just like other presenters before me, it is a little bit off-putting just kind of speaking into silence. So um, it's nice if people can chat and just let everybody know. That you're here. I'm just going to throw my LinkedIn in. It's in the presentation. I'm going to give everyone two more minutes and then I'm going to get going. Hi, Jordan. Just so you know, I've got a poll open while we're waiting for a couple more people to join. Um, if you can just vote, it's just to gauge everyone's experience level in building native apps. Um, we've got most people seem to be new, never tried it, but interested. So that's good to know. Uh, um, I'm also going to try to finish this session in 30 minutes because my good friend Dave McManus has um, rudely scheduled his session right over the top of mine to start in 30 minutes. So I'm gonna try to finish up as quickly as I can and get through all of my content as quickly as I can. So I'm gonna give everyone one more minute and then I'm gonna get going. Um, I don't know if we're gonna have many other people joining.
All right, I'm just gonna get started and people can catch up. Um, just let me share my screen. Okay, um, so now that I have my screen shared, I can't see the chat or the Q&A or the polls. So please keep adding your questions in there. I'll go back and check it periodically. Um, but since I'm gonna try to get through this in 30 minutes, I better get started. Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining. Uh, my name is Bernadette Murphy. I am uh, I run a low-code development agency here in Australia called Cedar Street. Um, I'm also the director of a company run entirely on Bubble called Future Events Lab. Um, I'm a tech veteran. I've been working in tech for about 20 years. Um, I've been building in Bubble for about four years and Cedar Street is now entering its third year as a development agency. Um, uh, why am I talking about this topic? Um, I presented last year at Dev Day and it was a fantastic experience. And then when coming up with a topic to talk about this year, um, I felt that because the mobile app editor is, come, is imminent, hopefully, and there is a ticking time clock against that bubble if you're listening, because we are all very, very eager to get access to this new bubble editor. So, um, you know, the sooner the better. Um, we build products for uh, lots of different clients, but primarily they have uh, two components. The first being a front end um, end user app, and the second being a back end administration portal. That's the usual structure of the majority of products that we build. So we are not Apple developers, we are not native app experts, but we build them. Um, and so in doing that, we have fallen for all of the traps. And I felt that it would be helpful to um, just highlight a few of them here today to hopefully help you avoid them. And just to be aware of some of the things that you need to consider when you are developing apps that are going to be published in the App Store. One thing I forgot to mention is if you haven't figured this out already, you can actually pop out this um, session into picture in picture. So if you're anything like me and you plan on watching this passively, you can pop it out so that it's um, visible on the side and you can keep going about your day and getting your other work done if you need to. Um, so why is this an important topic? So apart from the bubble editor coming out soon, hopefully, um, native apps are really hard to do. Um, the barrier to entry is really high. There's a lot of rigor applied, especially in, via the app store process that we're gonna talk about, but clients love them. They just love them. Um, we've had so many, you know, uh, attempted to persuade clients away from the need to have their apps published in the app store. Because the reasons why you would normally need to have your app published in the App Store are things like, you know, searchability and visibility if you are trying to promote your um, app product in, to a broad market. Um, or if you're trying to, if you need to access features and functionality um, which are not available from a normal um, installable web app. So most of the time, those things don't hold true and a client could get away with just using a simple PWA, but they don't want to. PWAs are not very well known. Um, and also there's just a, a credibility component to having your app in the app store. So clients really love um, if you are able to build apps that can be published in the, in the app store. So it is a very helpful skill to develop. Um, okay, so this is who I am and why you are listening to me. What am I gonna talk about today? So today I'm gonna cover really quickly our general architecture and approach to building native apps. Um, and this is, I guess one way of doing it, it's not the only way of doing it, um, but just so that you have an idea of how we go about um, executing on this. And then I'm gonna talk through a scenario of a recent app that we had released to the App Store. So um, the scenario is, um, and actually now I'm actually looking at this screenshot, that's a terribly genericized view of our app. I asked somebody in our team to genericize it and it actually looked really terrible, but this is the app and it's been genericized. Um, the scenario is that it's a paid membership app. Um, it had about 10,000 existing members in this um, uh, on this membership platform, and they wanted to release a new um, App Store app to support it. They were also hoping to then obviously expand their membership base through signups um, via the app. Uh, it was a social-based product. It was very much oriented around social feed, clubs, events, um, and also was kind of the front end into their back their flagship program, which is a managed letter writing program. 
All of this was supported by a bubble backend administration portal as well. So they ran their entire operations, they run their entire operations off a of bubble backend as well. Um, it was a subscription based product in the app store and it also included in app purchases as well. Uh, so um, as a part of running through that scenario, I'm gonna cover off five areas of the app store review requirements um, that we encountered as a part of our development process and that I felt were gonna be potentially relevant to the majority of apps that may end up being uh, published in the app store. If you've gone through this process yourself before, you'll know that the app store guidelines are extensive. Um, you know, they are extensive. If you are considering doing this though, I would recommend reading them um, cover to cover because they are, they do hold very true to them through the, through the review process. And if you are thinking of developing native apps like regularly, it's really worthwhile getting familiar with them. Um, but I am only going to cover five of the requirements today. And then at the end, I'm going to talk about screenshots, which is a really odd thing to talk about um, in the context of native app development but it becomes a weirdly important component of your deliverables through the app store review process. And people seem to forget about it until right at the end. And that obviously becomes very problematic. And I'll talk about that when we get to that section. Um, I'm just gonna go back and check if there are any um, questions in the chat or in Q and A, no, nothing. Okay, great, I'm gonna keep going. Um, okay, so, how do we currently build native apps? Um, so obviously we have our, um, our developers, our, uh, who is us, our clients that we're developing the product for, we're building our products in Bubble and we use the BDK um, native app plugin currently. And I say currently because we're hoping that that won't continue much longer. Um, we use BDK for our native app build. Obviously we also rely on Firebase and OneSignal as well. And there's the lovely Gaurav who, at the moment is a very critical part of our development pathways. Um, but hopefully again, that won't need to continue once the new bubble editor is here. Um, we manage all of our screenshots through um, the marketing team and uh, you know, a bunch of product, a bunch of products that we use for capturing our screenshots. I won't talk about um, um, hang on, I might actually have a problem. Oh. Hold on, I am going to reshare my screen because apparently it's not on the right slide. Okay. Hopefully we're back where we should be now. Um, if I'm not, please let me know, Kelly. Um, so um, we're using App Store Connect, obviously, for testing and submission. We're using Test Flight. We're using the BDK native. BDK native app for testing across multiple devices using the you know our testing team. Here is us, the frustrated iOS developers and our evil overlords, the App Store review team, who are keeping us on our toes throughout this entire process. Um, and then, yay, our app is live in the App Store. Um, we're doing our happy dance. And as an agency owner, this is the point where I'm realizing that because of all of this back and forth with the app review team, we now have no money. But that's my problem to deal with. That's not anything for you guys to be worried about. Um, and hopefully, as you can see, this architecture is quite complicated at the moment. Hopefully, very shortly, this will a lot of this will go away and we'll have a much simpler architecture here. We will just be re relying on the bubble for the product build, App Store Connect and Test Flight for testing, and then release. So hopefully that will be coming very soon. Um, okay, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is account and data management. So this is not the first requirement uh, numerically in the App Store review guidelines. Um, but the reason I pulled it out um, to start with is because it kind of underpins a real core principle of all of the review requirements that Apple has, which is around maintaining privacy, user privacy and control of the data that they provide to, to you to use the app. So in relation to account management and sign in, um, basically any data that the user provides as a part of you know, creating their account or signing up to your product needs to be able to be controlled by them. So when you're developing your product, you are gonna to have to make sure that you have built in features and functionality that will allow uh, users to manage all of those, those that information that they are providing to you. Um, so they need to be able to both initiate um, and complete data management within the app. So it is not sufficient to have, you know, contact us to update your account or contact us to delete your account. Everything needs to be able to be completed holistically within the product. 
Uh, apparently you're still seeing the same slide. Um, I'm going to reshare again. Sorry about this, guys. Hopefully you're seeing now the account and data management um, screen, are you? Let's see, Jordan. Ah, okay, it looks like, um, yeah, I'm not sharing the wrong thing. I am in a PowerPoint play view. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go back to this then. I'm just gonna go back to this so that you can see it. Um unless I can do this. Hold on. Um yeah. I'm just gonna go back to the slides. Hopefully if I just click through these slides here from 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 the um just normal view, you guys can see that. Um hold on. Hopefully you guys can see that now. Um, so, um, so yeah, I guess um, considering, you know, not only the ability to, you know, sign up, add all of their user data, but also actually manage all of that information that they've provided going forward. Um, you know, so account deletion was the one that tripped, that really tripped us up because this was an existing business. This was an existing um, set of users that um, were created even prior, prior to the, the app being released in the app store. And so as a part of the account deletion process, it wasn't just as simple as deleting it from the app records. It also had to then flow through into the administration processes around the app um, so that they could delete their accounts from other aspects of the business as well. So um, it's just something to consider that when you are building your product out, you will need to consider building in features to allow them to control it at all stages of, um, of user account management. Related to that um, it is user generated content. So not all apps will will have user generated content. Obviously, um, in our case, this was a huge component of the product. Um, so, user generated content is basically anything. It's, it's what it says. It's anything that the user is able to provide and contribute into the content of the app. So, in our case, we had this through our social feed and our club content. This could also be in the form of chat. It could also be in the form of forums. Anything where users are interacting and sharing information. Um, that will then kick you into this particular review requirement around creator creator content. So a couple of things to think about when you're when if you are planning on using UGC, um, they will require that you have a contact feature in the app, which is usually pretty standard. But for some apps, that isn't the case. It redirects you to the website, for example. Um, you have to have really strong and compliant T's and C's and privacy policy around user generated content. Um, so T's and C's is important across for anyone who is considering submitting an app into the app store. Um, but in particular, if you are allowing user generated content, you have to have specific sections which relate to um, the appropriateness and um, requirements around users sharing um, their individual content. Also, the ability to block, limit, delete, report all user generated content um, has to be built into the app as well. So you have to have basically an entire manage my content feature built in so that users can um, control the content that they see. Um, this also then needs to be supported by a back end administration mechanism of moderating that content. So when users are flagging objectionable content or blocking users and, and things like that, administrators need to be able to respond to that and you know um, remove users who are breaching guidelines or um, you know confirm that posts are inappropriate and remove them or you know reinstate them if they are if they are indeed appropriate so all of those um, features have to be built into your product as well so when you are scoping something up for a potential client you need to be thinking about all of these things as well um okay Performance and app completeness. So this is technically a review requirement 2.1 and beyond, but actually it appears much earlier in the review requirements, kind of in their introduction. And basically what they're saying is 
when you submit it for, to their review team for review, they're assuming that it is complete and fully tested. So that means there can be no outstanding bugs or critical UI issues. That sounds pretty obvious that you would want to be releasing a product with no bugs or UI issues. But likely, if you're developing this for a client, you're also battling real world um, limitations like um, time limitations, budget limitations, and you are going to have to make decisions about going live with known issues in your product. So you just have to be really careful that if you are going live with anything that there are, you know, workarounds for known, known bugs or, you know, they're not going to actually hit the end users and that you're able to do workarounds behind the scenes. Because as Apple are going through their review process, if they hit against a bug, they are literally going to stop it doing their review. Um, they're going to, you know, stop doing their review. They're going to flag this review requirement and they're going to make you fix that bug. Then go back, you know, resubmit back into the review process. So there's no point going live, going into the review process with a product that is not completely um, bug free or at least visibly bug free. Um, Apple will review and scrutinize every word in your submission, every single word in your metadata, every single word in your app description, in your declarations, in your privacy policy, in your T's and C's. They will also review your website. Um, so just be aware of that. If you do have any um, information on your website that relates to features and functionality that you are going to be offering on your in your app, then they are going to make sure that that is accurate and that it, that they are in sync and that there isn't anything kind of hidden on your website that isn't in the app um, declarations as well. Um, just when it comes to permissions, so uh, if you've used the BDK app build process, you'll note that this guidance is given there as well. But um, any permissions that you need to ask for on the user's device, so um, permission to use um, files, photo, camera, whatever it is that you need to use to make your app functional, make sure that you are, you know, obviously declaring that you are going to be requiring those and potentially request additional access than maybe what you think you may need initially, because if down the line you decide to add a feature or functionality to your app, um, you're then going to have to go through an entire rebuild process to um, add that into your permissions requests. Um, whereas if you get that all approved up front, then it saves you that hassle going back through that entire end-to-end um, -end process from the beginning again. Um, okay, membership, subscription, and in-app purchase. So like I said before, this particular app scenario had both. It was a um, subscription-based um, sign-up and then also had in-app purchases for additional access to features and functionality. The key thing here is that you just need to be really, really clear everywhere throughout your product, all through your screenshots, all through your app submission, exactly what services and features are included in the subscription or are not included in the subscription. So um, one area that we got tripped up on specifically was in this example here where I've got member resources, um, it we had originally called those freebies. So they were freebies that users had access to, we, we felt, obviously once that when they were members but this wasn't obvious to to apple they didn't feel like it was clear enough and so we had to go back and rename it to be member resources so it was clear that only members had access to these products through the app that required us to go back through the product itself make all those changes all of the screenshots um our app description we had to make changes to just for this one particular um feature which was quite minor in the context of everything else that we were doing so just consideration of what is included in your subscription and what is not included is really important. And then also just be aware that testing of payment scenarios across all of the different potential permutations can be quite complex and can take a long time to get it right. So you are gonna have to think about not just sign up, <clears throat> which is what most people think of, but also if you do have any existing members versus new signups, how are you actually managing those two you know, um, groups of users? payment failure, changes to membership level, um, exp expiration of subscriptions, cancellations, um, obviously successful payments. So you need to think about those from an app perspective. How is your app going to handle those? What's going to happen when a user whose membership has expired? What are they going to see when they try to log in? Are they just going to be have um, be blocked from accessing the app altogether? Or are they going to see, you know, log in and see a please update your membership screen? So all those scenarios have to be considered in your design, um, process-wise and product-wise, and then tested end-to-end -end on the other side as well. So all of the in-app purchases and subscription processes are really important to think about upfront because they can really trip you up. And the last one that I'm going to talk about, which was our 100% wildcard, <clears throat> 
was um, contest giveaway sweepstakes. So this is likely not going to apply to many apps that people are considering building. They're not likely going to be gaming gambling lotteries. But and, and ours wasn't either. We didn't realize. Um, but when we were going through the app review process, I actually got a text message from our client very early in the morning saying, hey, we've just got a response from the app review store, app review team. They've said that our um, our product is in now a, ga a gambling product and we now are, need to be compliant with all of these additional requirements. Didn't make any sense to me. I logged in immediately to try to figure out what was going on. What had happened was in the during the period of us going through the app review, um, they had been utilizing the chat feed feature in their web in their web on their website, basically their existing member portal. Um, and one of their admin team had innocently posted about a competition, a giveaway that they were running for their art club, and um, it, that post was now showing in the chat feed. So when Apple went in to review the app, they saw this post, they went, hang on a minute, you're running sweepstakes competitions through the app, you need to now declare this as gambling and lotteries and all these kind of things, right? So out of nowhere, we suddenly had to deal with this very wild card review requirement from Apple. We needed to sit down with a client and decide, okay, are we actually going to, you know, block and limit having running sweepstakes in in through the business through the app? Are we going to try to, you know, um, build that in? So we then did actually go through the process of meeting all the review requirements that Apple had around gambling contest lotteries, made all of the changes we needed to in our T's and C's and user licensing agreement. We had to make all of the, the changes we needed to make on our in our front end product in the back end portal that we were managing for them. So, you know, this was something that we never considered. It came out during the review process, and we just had to um, incorporate it. So, the key here is just that there will be a wild card. Like the app review requirements are so stringent, there will be a wild card that you haven't considered when you first set out to build your product, and you just need to make sure you're allowing sufficient time for rework and potentially feeding that back through your entire build all the way through to your submission. Um, and lastly, uh, screenshots. So I, to I told you I was going to talk about this. It's a weird thing to talk about, but I feel like it's often a forgotten component of the app, of the submission process itself. And strangely, it usually just becomes sort of the penultimate outcome of all of your work. So it kind of makes sense, right? Because this is the thing that people are seeing in the app store when they, you know, are searching for your app and they are looking to see what it does. You know, do they want to download it? And it's a thing that Apple is kind of endorsing, right? So they need to be really comfortable with the content of these screenshots and you know you, all of your metadata that you're that you're putting forward. So first of all, this requires development of appropriate content that you can show that demonstrates the best aspects of your product, um, but it's also obviously de-identified. Um, you need to meet the very strict and fiddly sizing requirements that Apple um, prescribe for all of their different device types. So my suggestion here is really set up a template in your preferred tool, which meets the various sizing and device requirements, and then just continue to use it. Um, anytime any change, anything changes via either the client requests a change or the app store review process in, um, initiates a change, everything has to be fed through, including updating your screenshots. So these can become quite fiddly and, and um, time consuming to keep in sync with all of the different changes that you're making throughout the review process. So again, just don't forget about this um, and make sure that you know you are um, you know leaving enough time to to come back to it. All right, I've only got three minutes left if I want to finish in 30 minutes. So I'm going to leave it open. I'm going to go back to the um, the chat and see if there are anything if there is anything in here. Is there any questions? So Vlad is saying a lot of clients want to avoid commission from, yes, the Apple commission is steep. How to perform such a scenario correctly like Spotify um, to register on web version and pay. I, I, I don't know, Vlad, are you talking about a PWA? um where it's not actually in the app store or are you talking about actually having it in the app store but managing payments outside um because if you're talking about having it in the app store itself but then managing payments and sign up on the outside 
incredibly difficult to do. Apple are, are really all over this. Um, they, we, we went through this, this thinking as well and actually attempted to submit a version which did not include in-app payments and we had people signing up on our website outside, could not get it through. Um, obviously, they want to maintain their revenue streams through people using their in-app payments um, platform rather than payment platforms outside. So um, I would say that's extremely difficult to do. I do know that people do do that. Like um, I think Netflix is another example where they actually don't take payment through the app, I think might be another example as maybe Spotify. If you're talking about PWAs, we can have an entire conversation offline because I do think PWAs are very underrated and they can you know, be very useful for a lot of clients who think they might need a native app and actually they could probably just get away with using a, um, a PWA. Yeah, maybe um, Kindle might have done that. Um, so obviously, you know, Amazon, Netflix, Spotify have quite big app development budgets and, and teams handling all of that presumably. We could never get it through, and I and I've and I've had you know very few people who could get it through where they have um, payment you know a, a paid business model where members are paying, but the payment is not actually being done through the app store. So, you know, good luck. I've never seen it done apart from a few big names who've managed to be able to do it. Um, have I ever implemented Apple's critical alerts? No. We haven't, um, Jordan, sorry. I We haven't done that for any of our projects. Um, but yeah, I'd be interested <laughs> in talking about it afterwards and see if there is any way that we can help you, know, help you if you haven't been able to figure it out. But we have not done that, sorry. Any other questions? Um, if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn afterwards. Um, yeah, let's connect on LinkedIn, Jordan, if you'd like, and we can talk through the specifics of that scenario. Um, but um, either way, hopefully that was, you know, useful to some people. Obviously, it'll be up and available for people to watch. So if anybody who missed the session, if you know of them, just make sure they uh, watch the session afterwards. All right, I'm going to end the broadcast so we can all get on to Dave's presentation now. Thanks so much. Bye, everybody. <laughs>